Iha Taishkevich, an Ukrainian expert on international and domestic politics, noted that the political framework in which Ukraine must operate is changing. He stated this on Espresso TV. Ukraine has succeeded in convincing its partners, who previously prohibited the use of Western weapons against Russian territory, to allow such strikes. We now see Western weapons including not only missiles, but also armored vehicles entering the Russian territory. This is one of the first conclusions we can draw from the start of the operation in the Kursk region. It indicates a shift in the political balance or framework within which Ukraine must operate, Taishkevich said. According to him, President Zelensky and Ukraine's partners recognize the possibility of peace talks with Russia. But the question arises regarding who will be at the negotiating table and their positions. Russia might attempt to replicate the Minsk negotiations, which means leaving some occupied Ukrainian territories out of the discussions. When the Minsk agreements were signed, Crimea was excluded from the negotiations and only Donbass was addressed. If Ukraine controls part of Russia and Russia proposes leaving some occupied Ukrainian territory out of the negotiations, Ukraine might counter with a similar proposal, suggesting that the Kursk region also be excluded from the talks. Taishkevich emphasized, Politico media outlet writes that the large-scale offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region is supported by Kiev's allies in the West. There are no signs that the partners are pressuring Ukraine to soften its advance into Russian territory. The article notes that even cautious Germany, which refused to take risks, not wanting to provoke Russian President Putin, especially when it came to arms supplies to Kiev, is not flashing any red lights regarding the operation of Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region. Ukraine has the right to self-defense enshrined in international law. This is not limited to its territory, the German foreign ministry said in a comment to the publication's journalists. The publication notes that it is not yet clear what the long-term goals of the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region are, but four days after it began, there is no sign of an imminent end to hostilities in the territory. Moreover, in the early hours of Friday, Ukraine launched a large-scale drone attack on the infrastructure of the Lipetsk region deep in Russia, hitting a key airbase. Main Intelligence Directorate of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry has destroyed around 30 Russian troops and six armored vehicles belonging to the Russian army at Kinban Spit in Ukraine's Mykolaiv region, Telegram channels reported. The operation started on the night leading to August 9 and continued into early morning. The landing operation was carried out by the units Chimera, Stugna, Paragon, Siberian Battalion, Terror, as part of Timur's special unit of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. The naval forces of the Ukrainian armed forces and units of the state security and defense forces were also involved in the operation carried out on Friday. It should be noted that main intelligence directorate of Ukrainian defense ministry carried out another military operation in Tendra Spit not far from Russian annexed Crimea Peninsula this week and destroyed Russian armored vehicles and an electronic warfare system. At the Russian airfield Lipetsk, too, hit by Ukrainian drones, warehouses containing more than 700 guided aerial bombs are detonated. Informed sources told Union correspondent about this. 
In particular, last night the Security Service of Ukraine in cooperation with the Armed Forces of Ukraine and the Special Operations Forces carried out an explosive strike on the Russian military airfield Lipetsk II. According to sources, the airfield housed several dozen fighter jets, helicopters, and warehouses where more than 700 guided bombs were stored. At the same time, after the Ukrainian drone strike, a powerful explosion occurred, which caused a chain detonation and a large-scale fire on a significant part of the airfield. Local authorities confirmed the fact of the detonation and announced the evacuation of residents of nearby settlements. As sources note, most of the aircraft stationed at the Lipetsk, two military airfield did not manage to take off. The Security Service of Ukraine, in cooperation with the Defense Forces, continues methodical work to destroy Russian aviation logistics so that the enemy does not have the opportunity to bomb Ukrainian cities with KABs. In early August, we cleared the Morozovsk airfield of KABs and fighters, and today it is Lipetsk 2's turn. We continue working, said an informed source in the security service of Ukraine.